I'm reminded of the story, ladies and gentlemen, of the emperor's new clothes. This is the story I used to read when I was a kid. Uh, these, these swindlers came into town, told this emperor that they had a special type of material that was invisible, but they could make it of the finest silk. But only the wise could see the silk. They could see the clothes. And the emperor said, you know, being vain, he said, and that's what uh, vanity is, a, de a desire for worship. That is the definition of worship, vanity. Um, so they, the emperor said, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. So they go in there and they start spinning on the spindle as though they're making something and they're just working right along. And the uh, king, the emperor, goes into the room and he's looking at them. He sees the spindle, but he really don't see anything on it. No material is on it, but they're just sitting there whistling as they work and spinning the clothes out. But he can't see anything. It's because they blinded him and told him that only the wise could see it. This is what the preachers tell you. That only the wise one could see this. Even though you see devastation everywhere, they're telling you that their doctrine is opposite of the devastation. That it produces opposite of what you see. Or don't see. So the king don't tell anybody. He sends some of his servants in there. And the servants go in and do the same thing. Pretend like they see these clothes on this spindle. And they come back and say, oh, they're fine. You should see the colors. It's so beautiful. And so finally, the swindlers... Uh, goes in and calls the king in. He takes off his clothes and they pretend like they're putting new uh, clothes on him. And he's standing in the mirror looking at himself and thinking he how beautiful he is, but he's butt naked, lying to himself. Don't see a thing. And so he steps up a, a procession and goes out into the street and prances through the street ladies and gentlemen, but naked. And so now that the, the, the social pressure is for everybody to pretend like they see the clothes, all the people are saying, ooh, ah, the king is walking through the street naked. And everybody's pretending like they see clothes on it. And it was one little boy he shouted out, that fool naked. It took the voice of one person to say, you naked. Look at yourself, Detroit. They telling you, you got clothes on. I'm telling you, you're naked. You're naked. And all the preachers are naked. They have nothing to offer you in the way of developing anything but what you see. Nakedness, blindness, and a dead mind. That's what you're getting from them, and that's why you have left off from building the city. Stanley Williams, can you talk about why you started the Crips? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I've stated it uh, in my memoir, Blue Rage Black Redemption, that we started out, at least my intent was to, in a sense, uh, address all the so-called neighboring gangs in the area. And uh, to put, in a sense, I thought I can cleanse the neighborhood of all these uh you know, uh, marauding gangs, but uh, yeah, I was totally wrong. And eventually, we morphed into the monster we were addressing. In what way? Well, we became a gang. We became exactly what uh, I had uh, odium for, which uh, were gangs, street gangs. I mean, they were. They became a pest. They were a pest. Every time I looked up, uh, my friends were being uh, preyed upon. 
And when I came from camp, I decided to create something that would deal with them, to put them in, the, in their place. I mean, it's, it's, it's really uh, ironic because we did too good of a job, and we morphed into what we were fighting, what we were battling against. What are your thoughts on the death penalty in general? Well, the death penalty, uh, it, it's not uh, a system of justice. It is a system of, a so-called system of justice uh, that uh, perpetuates, uh, perpetuates uh, a, a vindictive type of response, a uh, vigilante type of uh, aura about it. Uh, we're talking about something that is barbaric. We're talking about something that uh, it, it, do, it doesn't deter anything. And uh, for anyone to think that murder can be resolved by murdering, it's, it's uh, ridiculous. I mean, we look at all the wars that we have throughout uh, other countries and other nations, and all it does is uh, this violence, all it does is engender violence. There's, there seems to be no end but a continuous cycle, an incessant uh, process of blood and gore that doesn't end. And through violence, uh, you can't possibly obtain peace. You can, in a sense, occupy uh, a belief of, of peace. In other words, through this mechanism of violence you it appears that because there is a uh, a standing army or a standing police that is using brutality or violence or a system that uses brutality or violence that that is going to totally eliminate or stop uh, uh criminal behavior or criminal minds or, th or killings or what have you but it doesn't stanley williams there has to be another way do you ever imagine yourself being free in my dreams, in my dreams, I've uh, envisioned <laughs> my liberation many of times. Uh, matter of fact, I was telling uh, an individual the other day that in my dreams, whenever I run into some albatross or some type of dilemma, I seem to float away from it. And in my mind, that is a sense of freedom. That is a sense of uh, avoiding, uh, eschewing or shunning uh, any type of madness.